should have written inverse functions. Because functions is right with a little bit of English there. I need some help with that. So I'm going to talk about inverse functions and their graphs. And I'm going to start off with this. We're going to say let f of x, let f of x equal x cubed. Find the inverse function of f. So we'll start with this. We have this right now in function notation. First thing we're going to do, same thing as always, Greg, is we are going to put this into notation like this. Okay? And then, of course, we're going to do what first? Good. First thing we're going to do is solve for x. Right? And we get x is equal to the cube root, because right, we're going to take the cube root of both sides, cube root of y, isn't it? Uh, if you want to see what I did there, so you can see, there it is, cube root, cube root, right? So I took the cube root of those things, that's how I got to here. The next thing, of course, that we're supposed to do is switch, and we're going to switch x and y. So here's where x was. That's a terrible sorry, you guys. So we end up with y equals of x. Right? Then we're going to go back and put this in function notation and say, well, the inverse of f of x is this. So inverse of f of x. The inverse the inverse of f is equal to just going to verify this really quickly. This shouldn't take any time at all, I hope. First thing we're going to have to prove is this, that the inverse of this mess had better be equal to x when we come out the other side. So all I'm going to do is start with this. Here's our cube root here. So all I'm doing is I'm taking the frame of this right here. And here I'm supposed to put, x is supposed to be here, but Euler gave us this wonderful notation. So it says here, if I'm taking of this, then I take that, and it is where in the world? Here. Right. So I take that, and I drop it on the inside. <clears throat> and lo and behold, the cube root of x cubed is, in fact, x. That works, doesn't it? And I have to verify it one more way, and that ain't it. One more way, and that is to take f of the inverse of f of x, right? f of the inverse. And that, of course, also has to equal x, and we have to check that. And let's see, we know that f was, right, was x cubed, wasn't it? So here's where we put our x in cubed cubed here, right? And then we have to drop our inverse function in there, which is this cube root here. So we take the cube root and we drop it in there, cube root of x. And we know that this exponent of 3 cancels this index of 3. So it is true. So we verified, we verified that twice. So I'm liking this a lot. On a couple of other problems we looked at, there were some domain issues. Remember, we're not going to have those kind of domain issues when we have odd roots to our radicals, right? We can have a negative number in here, right? Because the odd root of a negative number does exist where the even root of a negative number is not a real number. If you have a question about that, please write something in my comments or come into my class and we can talk about it because it's something really, it sounds bizarre and it sounds kind of whatever, but it, it's absolutely the truth, isn't it? Um, also, I mean, let's take a look at this. This is an, this here, this x cubed, this is an odd function, right? Kind of looks, looks like that. Well, that's not a great picture. Of, that's not a great picture at all of it. It's an odd function. And remember what odd function means, right? An odd function. To be an odd function, this is just something I want you to keep in mind. Odd function is a function even or odd. A function is odd. Odd function if if f of opposite x is equal to the opposite of f of x. Uh, again, this is something you should know. It shouldn't be real confusing. I'm not saying it's not strange, but it shouldn't be real, really, really confusing. So I'm hoping that's good. 
So we work through this again. First thing we do is we take it out of function notation, right? We put put it y equals that thing. We solve for x, don't we? We switch x and y. This should be a recurring theme for us. We do the two tests. This is test A and this is test B. Both these things have to be true. We verify that they are. Now, if you don't mind, just for this particular video, can we just take a really quick look at this? Because there are some interesting things happening here. And I think that as our discussion continues, uh, hopefully it becomes more obvious. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to put this in. It also gives me a chance to show you how to do something with your calculator. So we're going to put the first one in. And that is this one. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this little button right here. First, make sure your cursor is here. And you see it's blinking right there. And then if you go to this menu screen here, look, and you double click that, right? It's the easiest way to put this in. And we want the third root of x and hit enter. And I'm not supposing with you that that's the coolest thing you've ever seen, but I think when you look at the relationship between the two, it might be a little bit more meaningful. So let's take a look and let's put the other one in. And remember that the original equation, f of x, was just x cubed. So x, remember when you want to raise to an exponent other than 2, you use this little caret right there and then put in the 3 and hit enter. Well, shut up. That's really cool. Okay, that's a, that's a really cool picture. So maybe you're disagreeing with me, but I think it's actually remarkable. So there that is. I would like to talk in the future about what the relationship looks like between the graph of f and, and the graph of its inverse. So I think I've given you enough to do. Hopefully you're figuring out your algorithm and you're taking this seriously and you're working really hard. Uh, the last work you guys did on variations was absolutely brilliant. I was very, very pleased with what you had done. I, it took half the time I thought. If you give the same effort to this, we're money in the bank. Ciao.